Good morning, and welcome to ENG 099 Conversational American English. My name is Charlie, and I'm organizing this massive open online course for December 2012. This is lecture seven of lecture eight, excuse me, lecture eight of ten. This is the job interview, part one of two. So we're going to have, uh, we're going to talk about job interviews in our uh, conversational American English section. And then we're going to do language talk, 8 of 10. Where we're going to give you some ideas and different ways to think about how to use the English language. And then we're going to finish off with uh, short, uh, continue reading our short story, The Gift of the Magi. This will be the eighth segment in that. And if anybody has any questions or anything that I see, we'll go over those too. All right, as a reminder, the course is organized at www.mr.danoff.org or g slash eng099. That's www.mr.danoff.org slash eng099. And what else? Uh, you can join the course via Facebook or Twitter. You can actually do it very, directly very via YouTube. You can leave your answers to the questions in the comments. Uh, you can do it via PDPU or Wikiversity or through the blog itself, or ideally by starting your own blog that we can reblog. All right. Um, and with that, I think we're going to get started with... Um, The job interview part one of two. All right. All right, sorry about that. Okay, so we'll go over to our Etherpad, as always. Not as always, as we've been doing lately. All right, so if you can't see it, this is piratepad.net slash eng099, P-I-R-A-T-E-P-A-D dot net slash eng099. Okay, I'll make this a little easier to see here. All right, so job interview, one of two, lesson plan. All right, so we're going to begin by going over some basic interview questions. All right, so tell us about yourself. So, well, first, I guess, First question before we do that is what is a job interview? All right, that's a good question. So a job interview view is where someone looking to hire a new employee uh, talks talks with someone who is who wants a new job okay so a job interview is where someone looking to hire a new employee talks with someone who wants a new job all right so let's say you wanted to be a teacher so you have your master's degree or you have your other degree, your PhD, maybe or your bachelor's, depending on what you're teaching, and you want a job. So the school needs a new social studies, te a new history teacher. So you go to the school and you talk to the head of the history department, the head history teacher, the principal of the school, head of the school, and he or she interviews you um, to see. So they talk with you to see if you will be the right person to be their history teacher. Okay? And so some basic interview questions that may come up 
um, is tell us about your some of makeup or tell us about yourself. So tell us about yourself. And the important thing here is that it is not it's not tell us about every single thing about you. Um, rather, it is give us a give us the story story of your professional experience. So what have you done? What jobs have you worked? And what education slash training have you completed? Completed. Okay. So why do you want this? So, for example, you could say, um, tell us about yourself. Um, well, I'm a hard-working, hard you should not pause like that. So tell us about yourself. Uh, if you want to be a history teacher. Well, you know, I want to be a, I've wanted to be a history teacher since I was in high school. And in college, I studied, majored in history. And then uh, in college, I got, I mean, I got a master's in history, in history after that, teaching history and education. So I have a master's in education and bachelor's in history. And I've done some student teaching, and I just love it. I study, I read history books in my free time, and I would be doing this for free, but it's uh, so much fun, and I'm good at it, and so I would like to do it full time uh, for your company or for your school. So, why do you want this job? So, give very clear reasons why you want to work the position. All right. So this could be because I want to work at an exciting company. I want to be part of a growing company. Um, growing company. Or I want more experience in this industry. I am ready for more responsibility. And all right, all right, or doing my research. I realize you are the best firm top firm in our industry and I want I want to join your team. Alright, so why should we hire you? So this is a difficult question. Um, but this is basically your chance, your opportunity to tell them why they should hire you. Alright? And you want to be very clear and specific. Okay, so the position, the position, so maybe the history teacher position, the history teacher position is for, is for new teachers only, and I have the, uh, I have the credentials, credentials, I have the educational credentials plus a passion for history that surpassed any of my peers in school at university. Here's a university and which will make my students love coming to class. All right, that's one example of why should we hire you. All right, and you could use that also. 
sorry, I got my morning coffee here. You could use that also in different ways with um, for a more uh, for a job at a company or a job at a bank or a job at a nonprofit. All right. What's a difficult situation you've overcome? What is a difficult situation you overcome? Um, so here you could talk about anything, I mean, any difficult situation you have. You um, not any. You want to keep it professional and serious. So maybe uh, I started I started a company with my I started started a company with my uh, college friends, my college roommate roommate, and. Um, we did not uh, we did not do a proper job of accounting in the first few months, so we quickly ran out of money. We had to adjust our um, approach and. Uh, And spend time every day looking at the books. Soon enough, uh, we were on top of it, on top of everything, top of our finances, and in the black. In the black. <coughs> <coughs> All right, so that's one example. So just something where something went wrong, and then you handled it in a professional context. All right, what are your weaknesses? Um, so this is where you want to talk about a weakness, but then use it as a way to talk about your strength. Like, my weakness used to be that I was too intense of a leader. I did a poor job of sharing control on projects. But I but I bought some books on leadership and took a course. Now I am relaxed but still serious about leading projects and I encourage my colleagues to take on responsibility. It's led to much better collaborative work than I ever did before alone. Okay, so for example, there I'm talking about a weakness. I was too intense of a leader. I was too serious. I did a poor job of sharing control on projects, so my team members, so my team members, did not like um, working together. Together but too much better than we ever did before. All right. All right. So the big thing with those interview questions is just you want to keep it specific to yourself and how what the skills you have lead or are going to help company or the school or the nonprofit you want to work for. Let's talk about your education and your experience and how it's going to help them and when you give answers to all the questions they ask you. All right. All right. Let's um I think that's uh I'll include a link to the Wikipedia article about job interviews, and they have some nice 
resources there as well, as well as a video you can read, a video you can watch. Um, I'll put it at the end of this section. Um, if you want to get more insights into job interviews. Um, for now, let's uh, let's move on to the language talk section of this um, lecture, and I'll come back to talk more about job interviews tomorrow as well. All right, so this is language talk eight of ten. It's uh, going to be directly in the book like we did last night. All right. Okay, so I just want to make sure it's all clear. All right, lesson eight, composition. You've now learned to analyze sentences. That is to separate them into their parts. And what are their parts, you may be asking? Well, if you've taken the other lectures in this course, if you've completed the exercises and done the work, you know that the parts are the subject, and the predicate, which is the subject is what the sentence is about, and the predicate gives more information about the subject. The subject is what is thought, and the, su the predicate gives information about what is thought. All right, you must next learn to put these parts together, that is to build sentences. All right, so we're building sentences, maybe moving on from two word sentences. The separation of a sentence into its parts is analysis, the putting together of its parts together is synthesis, construction, or composition. So composition is writing. We will find one part and you must find the other and do the building. All right. So this is a rule, capital letters. The first word of every start sentence must begin with a capital letter. All right. This is a capital letter. It's big A. It's big C. It's big W. Capital letters must start every sentence in the English language. All right. Not every single sentence. There are probably some examples where it can, but almost every one. Most of them. All right. <clears throat> a period must be placed after every sentence that simply affirms, denies, or expresses a command. Period must be placed at the end of almost every sentence that affirms, denies, or expresses a command. Construct sentences by supplying a subject to each of the following predicates. Ask yourself the question, what swim, sink, hunt, etc.? The proper answers will be in the subjects required. Okay? So here you can make a sentence with uh, children swim or hippos swim. Hippos swim, or yeah, hippos or swim. You can do the rest here on your own. This exercise may profitably, may profitably be extended by requiring people to supply several subjects to each predicate. So you can do more than one subject like I did for each predicate. All right. Add the S ending to the predicates that are without it and make the needed changes in your subjects. Drop the S ending for the predicates that have it and make the needed changes in your subjects. So the S endings. Um, So you could say, fires burn, take off the S, or John, or uh, candles burn, you could say, or um, uh, the, uh, what else burns, uh, wood, or you could say wood burns, say fires burn or wood burns, you see there? So if it needs an S, add it, or if it doesn't need an S, take it off. All right. Okay. So now completing those activities will be uh, part of the assignment or the exercises for this lecture. All right. So that was language talk, 8 of 10.
Uh, we're starting to build sentences on your own. Um, working slowly, but a couple more lectures. Um, all right, now let's move into the short story. All right, so if you remember uh, yesterday, Della was very worried. Della is the wife of Jim about the fact that she got her hair cut in order to buy a present for Jim. She sold her hair, but she's worried that Jim won't like the way she looks with this hair. <clears throat> this is a short story by O. Henry from the early, maybe 1906. At 7 o'clock, this is PM, at 7 o'clock the coffee was made and the frying pan was on the back of the stove, hot and ready to cook the chops. Jim was never late. So tonight, Jim is late. Della doubled the fob chain in her hand and sat on the corner of the table near the door that he always entered. So Della is nervous. She's waiting for Jim. Then she heard his step on the stairway away down on the first flight, and she turned white for just a moment. So she turned white. That means that she got very, very, very scared. She had a habit of saying little silent prayer about the simplest everything, everyday things. And now she whispered, please, God, make him think I'm so pretty. So remember, Della is very worried that Jim will think she's pretty, but she loves him, and we'll, we'll see. The door opened, and Jim stepped in and closed it. He looked thin and very serious. Poor fellow. He was only 22. To be burdened with the family, he needed a new overcoat and he was without gloves. Jim stopped inside the door, as immovable as a setter of the scent of quail. His eyes were fixed upon Della, and there was an expression in them that she could not read, and it terrified her. <coughs> so there was an expression in his eyes, so she saw something in his eyes that she could not read, and usually people who are married, I don't know, I'm not married, but I imagine people who are married uh, they can see, if they look each other's eyes, they can learn a lot. They know how the other person is feeling. Um, there's not anger, nor surprise, nor disapproval, nor horror, nor any of the sentence that, sentiments that she be prepared for. So she was preparing. She was thinking about the different emotions or sentiments Jim may feel. And this is a different one. He simply stared at her fixedly with that peculiar expression on his face. Della wriggled off the table and went for him. All right. So, Jim came home. Della was very, very worried about Jim coming home and seeing her hair for a little bit now. And he has come home, and he has a peculiar, so, so that means strange. So we don't know if he's happy or sad, or if he's happy or sad, or he doesn't care. Uh, he just has a peculiar expression on his face. Be sure to come back tomorrow night at 7 p.m. USA Central, uh, mr.danoff.org slash eng099 uh, to RSVP or email me to let me know if you want to join this Google Plus Hangout and we can talk English and you'll we'll learn more about Della and Jim and the different things we've been working language talk about language talk and we'll talk again about the job interview. All right. Thanks for taking the time. Have a wonderful day.